Hey, my people, how you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic damn day. Welcome back to the channel. So, obviously, I have been looking at a few real sociedad things, and I've come up with this set of instructions how to replicate Emmanuel Alguacil's. I'm pretty sure I've butchered that, but please do forgive me. We're going to be replicating and recreating their 433 formation in the game FC24. Of course, this is real sociedad. Um, they do play some really good frenetic football, and, and it's it's a really um, a fantastic and amazing and fascinating thing to see. Um, I, I watched the the Benfica game uh, last week, and they were phenomenal. Could have scored more than the three goals. They they had the ball in the back of the net at least more than the three times. Uh, they they had Benfica on the ropes. So we will be going over ways that you can replicate and recreate those sets of instructions in the game, of course. So for the formation going forward, it's just the basic 4-3-3 holding. So it's one goalkeeper, two centre backs, two full backs, one DM, two central midfielders, two wingers, and then of course one striker. So for the tactics under Emmanuel Agusil, I think the tactical vision that best suits um what Real Sociedad are trying to do, and it, it factors in all their, their multifaceted um, approaches to the game, whether it's on the defensive side of things as well as the offense. Um, I think it's wing play. Wing play does allow you to incorporate all those little factors to try and get the best out of this Real Sociedad team, as well as trying to replicate how they do play. Um, so yes, wing play best suits them. The defensive style is set to pressure on heavy touch. So, I mean, I did see this in the Benfica game, and I have seen this throughout the course um, of the, the previous games that they have played where they, they do tend to try and sit and keep their structure, making it very hard for the opposition to try and play through them, especially through the midfield areas, um, especially in Spain. They, they, the, the midfield game is so important. So making it very hard for the opposition to try and play through you um, is essential. So they'll try and keep that structure, keep that shape, wait for the opposition to make a mistake and then pounce. In the Benfica game, of course, um, I think it was Fl Florentino. I think that that was him. Um, he ended up playing like a, a very mediocre back pass with not enough pace on it. And it was basically a through ball for Yaza ball. And that's just like the types of things that you will be looking to try and, you know, uh, counter attack on it and try and work with um, with this team going forward. Wait for the opposition to make a mistake. Of course, they will look to try and press. They will look to try and force the opposition into potentially going long or making a mistake of their own. And then they'll look to try and counter attack and counter press and move the ball into the offensive side of things and then try and score a goal, of course. The team width is set to 50, so it is a very balanced approach. And I always say this, but it does try and prevent the, the, the opposition's attack from whipping in crosses, as well as having the ability to try and play through the lines. But naturally, if you do try and spread a team out, that does leave a few gaps in between the lines, and that does allow the opposition to try and play through you. So it's a give and take system, as per always, um, where more times than not, you will be able to prevent either or, but sometimes, sometimes, and that is quite frustrating, but sometimes you do tend to concede a few, whether it's a, a through ball being played through the lines or whether it's a cross whipped in from those wider regions, you will concede um, more times not. But again, it, it is in place to try and prevent that from happening. So more times than not, you can also look to try and stop that cross or stop that through ball being played. So it is a give and take system, like I said. The depth, however, is set to a, a mid block at 55. You can probably push it up just a little bit. And I always like struggle with what is the most accurate depth because we see teams um, and when they start the game off, if they are playing a very high line, they're obviously they, they do it to the, the best of their ability. But as stamina drains and so on, they tend to just to shrink a bit and, and that, that high line then you know drops to a mid block. And then if a team starts with a mid block, that mid block then drops to a low block. So. I would probably say it's around 55 and you can definitely play around with it between 55 and maybe even a 70. So a, a high mid block, you could say. Um, but nonetheless, I, I wouldn't go above 70 and I wouldn't go below 45, to be honest, because they definitely do not play a, a, a low block at times. I haven't seen them play a low block throughout the course of this season, at least. Um, unless they're like obviously like hanging on for dear life and they need to like secure a win, they'll, they'll obviously drop that. But in their natural game plan and their natural style of play, it's more or less a mid block at times. With the offensive build up, I've set it to slow pace build up, as well as the chance creation is set to position. They do like to try and move the ball through the lines so with the goalkeeper restarts. They want players to be able to get on the ball, show for the ball, and then progress it forward, build up slowly through the, the, the phases and the thirds of the field, and then obviously progress it into the box for a potential goal. Um, and more or less, this does allow your defenders to try and show for the ball a bit more, as well as your your three midfielders, you could say, mainly your, your DM, 
he would look to try and show for the ball a bit more, get on it, and try and create from there going forward. As for the width, it is set to 65. Now, I did say wing play. They're, they're forwards and mainly their wingers. They do like to get on the ball and travel with it. I mean, Baron Ashe is fantastic at doing so. When you do play the likes of Oyazabal on that left or that right flank, he's also very good with the ball at his feet, being able to have the ability to carry it over long distances. But it's not only there, though. It's also your fullbacks. Um, both sides of, of the, the team, in terms of the fullback department, they have got very good pacey, um, strong carriers of the ball in the, the, the fullbacks. So either or, it does work out quite well. You can have that interchanging play, the little one-two passes in behind the opposition defense, and you could be in and away. As for the players in the box, I have set it to seven, and now that does allow for a bit more fluidity. Uh, I do know that the likes of Moreno does like to make those advancing runs into the box, as well as sometimes the likes of Mendes. So you do want to try and incorporate them into that attacking third when needed. Um, and it's not always both of them at the same time. Sometimes it's one or the other, which is why I've gone for seven and not higher than that, because I always find that if you go for seven or sorry, eight or nine, it does more or less force both of them into the box. You don't really want that. You want a bit more of a, a structured midfield in case you are able to, you know, misplace a pass and it's turned over. You want to have a bit more structure in a defensive layer to try and prevent that counter attack from happening. Um, as for corners and free kicks, as for always, it is set to four. Okay, so for the instructions going forward, we'll start off with the goalkeeper. Now it's a very balanced approach for Romero, but I think it best suits him. He isn't the best at, at being able to claim those aerial balls. He does look to try and punch it a fair amount. He's also quite decent with his feet, being able to play from the back, but because you aren't playing the highest of lines, you don't really warrant a sweeper keeper. He doesn't really have that much space. You do have the likes of the Norman as well as um, Zabaldia, who will make those tracking back runs in time to try and stop the the, the opposition's um, offense. So you don't really need him doing too much, which is why I've gone with the balanced approach. Moving on into the defensive department, we've got our two center backs who are both set to their base set of instructions. And you will note that there is a, a running theme with this uh, formation and the instructions. It's a very mirrored image. So more or less what happens on the left will happen on the right, unless it's a, a major change that is required. Um, and then moving on to the, the left back, as well as the right back, they've got the same set of instructions. Um, the likes of Kieran Tierney, as well as Triore, they will be set to join the attack, of course, adding a lot of pace down either flank, um, looking to try and support the attacking outlet sometimes, or most times. Um, normal inceptions are set to be on for them, as well as the overlapping run type. You want them consistently providing a lot of width down either side. And then as for their defensive positioning, especially for Tierney, um, they are both set to step up. You want to have that aggressive nature imposed on the opposition. As you can see at Fort Triore, he's got the same set of instructions as well. Now into the midfield, starting off with the DM, Zuba Mendy, a fantastic player linked with Arsenal, um, linked with another team as well. I think it might be Bayern Munich, but nonetheless, he has been playing incredibly well. Um, you could say he's the engine room of this team going forward. Um, the ability to pick out passes, the ability to intercept and break up play of the opposition, very good. Um, always has a, a nose for where to be and how to, you know, break up the opposition's play. But he's set to cut passing lanes, and that goes hand in hand with how he does play in real life. His um, attacking support is set to stay back while attacking. Very much like what Rodri does, he will more or less try and be the linchpin in uh, the, the offensive side of things. So if there's too much pressure in, in the opposition's box, he will look to try and be that outlet ball just to try and draw players out and then fire a, a long ball out wide to either a Kubo or a Baron Ache or one of your fullbacks potentially and just try and spread the play and rotate it um, to try and, you know, draw a few bodies out of position of the opposition. Um, normal exceptions are set to be on for him. You don't really want him chasing the ball too much. He's going to try and shield that back line and add a nice layer of protection for them. And then as for the positioning freedom, I did mention this, of course, when you are, you know, building up quite slowly from the back to front, you do need a, a player to be able to pick up the ball, take command of the midfield. And he does a very, very good job with showing for the ball, taking it off either the goalkeeper or the back line, and then progressing it nice and high the field. Whether it's a long pass, whether it's the ability to drive with the ball, he does do a very, very good job. His defensive positioning, you don't really want him slotting in at either left or right back. You want him just shielding the, the back two at times or the back three, depending on who has gone forward and who hasn't. But more times than not, he's going to man that hole just in front of your back four. Slightly higher up the field to our central midfielder who does play as an attacking midfielder. And it's a very much the same with what happens on the left does happen on the right. So what happens for Moreno? will happen for the likes of Mendes. 
Both of them are said to have a box-to-box -box role, so sometimes looking to drop off a bit more, help support the likes of Zuba mainly in the build-up play going forward, and other times they do look to progress nice and have the field be a bit more involved in the attacking outlets. Their support on crosses is both set to a balanced approach, so sometimes making that advanced run into the box, other times looking to try and facilitate on the edge of the area. Aggressive interceptions are set to be on, and this does help them win the ball back and force the opposition into those key mistakes, like I mentioned earlier. The defensive positioning is set to cover the wing, so they will look to try and cover for the likes of Tierney or the likes of Triore, depending on which side you're on. If they are out of position at times, picking up those runners, making sure that they are tracking that vacated space. And then both of them are set to having a stick to position approach for their positioning freedom. You don't really want them wandering too far out or popping up in the little half spaces in and around. You want them to uh, provide a structured approach to this midfield. And as you can see, for the likes of Mendes, he's got the same set of instructions as well. Then now to the left-hand side, Baron Ache, um, a very different role compared to what Kubo has, and I'll get into that when we start talking about Kubo. But for now, Baron Ache, he sits to come back on defense, consistently looking to try and help the, the fullback out on the defensive side of things. It also does allow both your wingers, because both of them will try and track back when need be. It allows them to be a bit more involved in, in the lower regions of, of the, the field. It allows them to be a bit more involved in the build-up play going forward. He is set to stay wide, so he more times than not will provide a lot of width down this left-hand flank, as well as his support runs is set to a balanced approach. So sometimes looking to come short when need be linking up with the midfield, other times looking to get in behind using that pace, using that ability to exploit the space and behind the, the opposition's defense, or potentially having the ability to be that target man. So he can have a, a mixed bag approach to any game, and I think that does tend to help with his skill set going forward. As for his interceptions, it's set to aggressive, just like with your two midfielders or your two central midfielders, he will look to try and press that back line, forcing them into errors. And then his support on crosses is set to balance, sometimes looking to get into the box for the cross, other times looking just to hang back, trying to facilitate the pace of play if the likes of a Moreno has gone further into the box to try and attack the cross. Onto the right-hand side now for Taki Fuso Kubo, a fantastic player nonetheless. He sets having a basic defensive support, so not always looking to try and help back with Traore because he will look to sometimes be the out there ball. He very much does try and take up that striker role, and you will see now with Oyazabal's instructions, he does vacate that area and allow the likes of Kubo to try and attack as a striker. Um, he will be set to cut inside, so cut, cutting in and taking shots on for himself, um, and that also allows him to try and take up that striker role. His support runs is also set to balance, so sometimes looking to get in behind, making those lung-busting runs in behind the defense. Other times, looking to be a bit more of a target man or potentially coming short and linking up quite effectively, either with the striker or the midfield. Now, his interceptions is set to aggressive, as well as his support on crosses is set to having a balanced approach. Very much like Baron Ache, he will look to try and facilitate or potentially take up a spot in the attacking third to try and um, score the cross or score off the cross, I should say. Um, and just get on the end of those um, whipped and crosses. And then finally, we move on to Oyazabal, who will have a balance width for his support run, so sometimes looking to drift wide. And when he does do that, the likes of Kubo does tend to drift inside and take up that attacking role down the center. Or potentially, Oyazabal will look to try and take up that central role, link up play quite effectively with the midfield. And in order to do that, you need him to come back on defense, but we will get there fairly soon. Most importantly, his attacking runs, he will look to try and test that opposition backline with making those advanced runs in behind. Aggressive interceptions are set to be on for him. And then, of course, the defensive support is set to come back on defense, being very much involved um, lower in the lower regions of the field with the linker play with the midfield, allowing him to sometimes just drop off and draw opposition players out of position. So if you do rotate the side and the likes of Elisundo as well as Silva come into play, they do have slightly differing roles compared to the, the natural fit that I did go with for the original starting 11. We'll start off with the right back. He's set to having a balanced attack, so we'll look to sometimes get forward. Other times he'll look to try and lock down that defensive side on the right-hand side. His interceptions is set to normal as well as his run type is set to mix. So sometimes providing the width down the right-hand side, other times looking to provide an underlapping run to try and provide crosses or cutbacks for the attacking line in the attacking third. His um, defensive positioning is still set to step up. He wants him to be a bit more aggressive, especially if he's not getting forward. And then moving on to our striker, the likes of Andreas Silva. His support runs is set to stay central, so not exactly the same role that Oyazabal does have. He will look to try and latch onto those crosses a bit more, trying to attack them in the air. Um, and then as for his run type, it's set to a mixed bag. So he will provide those runs in behind, just like Oyazabal but he does have a bit more physical approach to his game where he can have the ability to back into the opposition link up play more effectively 
with um, his wingers as well as the, the midfield just in behind him. His interceptions are still set to aggressive. You still consistently want your front line to try and press the opposition. And then as for his defensive support, a slight change to it compared to a Yaza Bowl. He is set to having a basic defensive support. So sometimes he does have the ability to drop off. Other times he will look to hang slightly high up the field, linking up quite effectively with the likes of Kubo in transition for those attacks. So yes, people, that is my version of Emmanuel Agassil's 4-3-3 tactics and formation with Real Sociedad in the game FC24. Obviously, if you have enjoyed this, please hit that like button. The goal is 3K subs by the end of this year. I I, I would be amazed if we got there. It would be fan damn -tastic. Um, But obviously, I do know that there is a ways to go. But at the same time, I'm working on some videos behind the scenes. Um, and I'm very excited to share them with you guys. So if you guys can subscribe, like, share, fan damn -tastic. Let's get to 3K subs by the end of this year. If not, it's okay. But if so, fan friggin' tastic. Until the next time, you absolute bloody legends. I hope you have a damn great day. I'm out.